I have made a couple of videos in the past few days discussing with you guys about the state of last day on Earth. We talked about its decline in popularity, lack of updates, the seasons, and the overall shift of focus towards the sole goal of farming money rather than making the game better. But I still love this game, and I want it to succeed. I want this game to be what it is supposed to be, which is a good zombie survival game. So I'm making this video to discuss some changes and additions that could make LDOE great again. Of course, it's up to the devs at the end of the day. And as always, feel free to share your opinions in the comments down below. The first thing I would want to be changed is the seasons. From the comments of my video, Seasons ruined LDOE and here's why. Check it out for more details. A lot of you guys agreed that seasons are boring, repetitive, too short, have mediocre rewards, and for some, are not challenging at all. To improve the seasons experience, I have several ideas that could make them more engaging and less repetitive. First, I suggest making the seasons last longer, a full month instead of the current shorter durations. This would give players more time to explore and enjoy the content without feeling rushed. In addition to longer seasons, there should be more diverse events added to the rotation. For instance, bringing back the arena event would be a fantastic way to reintroduce variety into the game. Events could be shuffled randomly throughout the month, so players don't end up completing the same repetitive tasks over and over. While I agree that some events, such as Bunker Bravo and the Police Department events, should remain consistent because they make clearing the locations much easier, there are several events that could be removed. For example, the fishing tournament, big hunt, and headhunting events feel a bit stale. Removing these events from time to time would ensure the game stays fresh and players don't lose interest in the seasonal content. Another important aspect is the rewards. To keep players motivated, the loot should be more valuable and meaningful. One way to enhance rewards is by offering essential resources for settlement building. Parts needed for crafting modifications like factory parts and carbon composites, more chopper, boat, and ATV parts, as well as blueprints for weapons and drones. Importantly, these rewards should be available to all players, not just those who purchase premium passes. While premium players could have an easier path or access to additional boosts to help in events, free-to-play players should still be able to complete the entire season and collect all available rewards. This would keep the game fair and balanced while ensuring that all players have the opportunity to progress. On top of extending seasons and improving rewards, I believe the seasons should return to having distinct themes, much like in the early days of Last Day on Earth. Themed seasons would add depth and excitement to the game, bringing in new storylines and characters that players can connect with. Themed seasons could introduce fresh content and provide a unique experience for each season. This would prevent the game from feeling repetitive and give players something new to look forward to each time a season begins. It's no secret that Last Day on Earth needs a true multiplayer mode. While the crater exists as a multiplayer area, it doesn't capture the essence of what players have been asking for, a full multiplayer experience within the main game itself. Players want to clear locations together, raid real players instead of bots, and engage in other exciting co-op activities. Adding this long-promised feature would not only bring fresh excitement, but also elevate LDOE to a new level, possibly making it one of the most popular zombie survival games out there. But of course, implementing a multiplayer feature in LDOE is no easy task. It's not something that can be added overnight. It would require a lot of time, planning, and effort to ensure it integrates smoothly into the existing game. Multiplayer brings with it complex technical challenges, such as ensuring servers can handle the increased activity, preventing cheating or exploiting, and balancing gameplay to make sure that cooperation doesn't make the game too easy or too difficult. However, instead of launching a full multiplayer feature all at once, the developers could take a gradual approach, introducing small updates over time to build up to a robust multiplayer experience. For instance, a great starting point would be adding the ability to clear locations in co-op mode. Take Bunker Alpha as an example. 
you could invite a friend to join you in the main lobby of Bunker Alpha. And together, you start a co-op version of this location. Of course, the challenge would need to scale with the number of players. Perhaps the number of enemies or their difficulty could increase, or the loot could be distributed differently to balance the cooperative effort. This would keep the game challenging, but also rewarding, ensuring that playing with friends doesn't make things too easy. After successfully implementing co-op gameplay for clearing locations, the next step could be adding PvP. For example, currently, players are raiding bot-controlled bases, which can feel repetitive and unfun. By allowing players to raid the bases of real players, the stakes would be much higher. Defending your own base or attacking another player's would require much more strategic planning and skill, adding a thrilling new element to the game. Finally, the developers could expand multiplayer even further by incorporating team-based events, cooperative base building, or larger community-based goals where groups of players could work together to achieve a common objective. Over time, Last Day on Earth could evolve into a truly cooperative survival experience where players rely on each other not just for resources, but for survival itself. One thing LDOE has been struggling with recently is the lack of consistent and meaningful updates. It's hard to ignore that. For the past few months, we haven't seen a lot of new content. Updates are becoming slower and less frequent, and it's not as if there's nothing left to add to the game. In fact, the developers themselves have made several promises about upcoming features, but many of these have yet to materialize. A good example of this is the 2024 roadmap they revealed, which gave players a glimpse of what they were planning for the rest of the year. So far, however, all we've seen from it is the introduction of the headhunting event and a few changes to the big hunt. Beyond that, there hasn't been much to get excited about. Now, with the holiday season upon us, it's likely that the developers will focus on seasonal updates for Halloween, Christmas, and New Year's, rather than introducing substantial, permanent content. What Last Day on Earth really needs is permanent content that enhances the game in a meaningful way, rather than adding temporary content that doesn't last. We've said it countless times, but the developers need to focus on adding the features they've promised for years, whether it's from the 2024 roadmap or even from years ago, like Bunker Charlie, the introduction of Tungsten, or the long-awaited helicopter. The game is full of unfulfilled promises. Of course, it's unrealistic to expect everything at once, but there's no reason the developers couldn't release a significant update each year that adds the long-requested features players have been waiting for. Rather than focusing on short-lived events, the developers should commit to gradually delivering these long-promised features. The key is not to overwhelm themselves or the player base by trying to release everything all at once. Instead, they could aim for one big, game-changing update per year an update that includes one or more of the major additions players have been asking for. This way, they can keep the game fresh, exciting, and rewarding for players without making empty promises or relying solely on temporary events to fill the gaps between updates. Over the last few years, we've seen Last Day on Earth evolve from a fun, player-centered experience into a game that feels increasingly like a cash grab. As dedicated players, it's hard to ignore the fact that Kefir, the game's developers, have shifted their focus from creating an engaging survival game to finding ways to push microtransactions. Go to WWE.com and register. I want a million dollars. The game has become filled with intrusive offers that pop up as soon as you enter and many rewards are now hidden behind paywalls, as seen most recently with the Headhunting Arena event. What was once a game focused on survival, strategy, and exploration has turned into a frustrating experience for many players who are constantly bombarded with in-game offers and incentives to spend real money. These small things, when combined, can really worsen the overall gaming experience. Nowadays, the game feels less about skill and strategy and more about how much money you're willing to spend. A clear example of this is the Commune event. The developers made recommendations for specific weapons that would make completing the event easier, such as the flamethrower, 
Genesis weapons, and the hunting sniper. However, these weapons are notoriously difficult to obtain in the game, requiring a lot of time and effort, or straight up buying them. And of course, special offers popped up in the shop where you could conveniently purchase these weapons. This tactic makes it obvious that the game is encouraging players to spend money in order to advance or complete events, which takes away from the satisfaction of earning rewards through effort and strategy. This shift in focus is something the developers need to address if they want to keep their player base happy and engaged. Everything in the game should be accessible to all players, without exception. Players who pay for premium features should have some advantages, like making the game less grindy or offering convenience. But nothing should be locked behind paywalls. Free-to-play players should still be able to experience the full range of content without feeling like they're at a massive disadvantage. One thing that is often overlooked, but is crucial for any game studio wanting to maintain the trust of its players, is communication. We as players love LDOE and want it to be the best it can be, but too often we're left in the dark. Instead of being kept informed about what's happening inside Kefir Studios or the game's future, we are bombarded with memes and other irrelevant content on their social media platforms. It's essential that the developers shift their focus and prioritize clear, consistent communication with their player base. Regular updates on game progression, sneak peeks into upcoming features, and artwork, like they used to share in the past, would go a long way in keeping the community engaged and excited about what's coming next. It's not just about showing us what they're working on, but also about interacting with the players and addressing concerns or questions directly. Moreover, listening to player feedback is equally important. It's one thing to communicate updates, but it's another to engage with the community and listen to its suggestions and concerns. Many players have valuable insights into what could improve the game, and incorporating community ideas into the development process would strengthen the relationship between Kefir and the LDOE player base. In addition, the developers need to reconsider making big promises that they aren't capable of delivering. There have been countless instances where major features were announced, ounced, or teased, only to be delayed indefinitely or quietly dropped from the roadmap. This kind of overpromising can severely damage the trust between the developers and the players. It's better to focus on sharing what they are actually working on and being transparent about their goals and limitations. A more transparent approach would help avoid disappointment and frustration. If the developers were more honest about the challenges they face, whether it's in terms of development time, resource limitations, or technical issues, players would be more understanding. Instead of hyping up features that may not arrive anytime soon, they should focus on smaller, achievable updates and improvements. Last Day on Earth was and still is a great game. As players, all we want is a bright future for LDOE. I'm 100% positive that if somehow Kefir shifts its focus from money to passion, all of the points I mentioned could be implemented within three to five years. But of course, it's all up to Kefir. It's in their hands. That's it. I hope you liked this video. Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more quality content. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.